With several tests taking place at the Massey Outpost this week, we catch a glimpse of some possible HLS hardware, work continues on the chopsticks, and the Sarens crane is laid down for another reconfiguration. Now let's dig into this week's update. Picking up where we left off last week, in the early hours of Friday morning, Ship 31 arrived at the Massey Outpost. The Flight 6 Starship, already mounted onto the ship's static fire stand, was moved over to the flame trench in preparation for testing. Later that morning, a glass delivery arrived at the build site. This latest shipment was the windows for the new under construction feature entrance for the Star Factory. Shortly after noon, our Rover 2 camera caught a fresh round of testing on the Tower 1 chopsticks. The landing rails were raised and lowered multiple times as SpaceX continues to tweak and fine-tune both hardware and its control software in preparation for Mechazilla's first catch attempt. Meanwhile, over at the Tower 2 construction site, a concrete pump truck was spotted with its boom extended. The arm appeared to be moving around in the area near where the commodities pit and trench are being built. Later, back over at Orbital Pad A, the lower stabilizer arms on the chopsticks were actuated. This is the first time we've seen these tested in a while, and it's not immediately clear if this was just to check that everything was working okay, or if any of the recent work on the arms affected this hardware. Around that same time, the big Sarens crane that was used to stack the second launch tower began to lower its luffing jib, then its main boom. This lay down was expected as this full height is no longer needed for the tower. The crane is expected to be modified to a shorter configuration with a high capacity for the rest of its time at Starbase. In the early hours of Saturday morning, a concrete pump truck was spotted setting up for a pour in the ring yard. The pour lasted about three hours before the boom was folded back up. While heavy rains made for some slower days at Starbase this week, on Sunday, our friends at Rocket Ranch managed to catch some Ship 31 testing over at the Massey Outpost. The Starship was loaded with propellants and the frost rings were visible on both of the vehicle's main commodity tanks. Unfortunately though, we weren't treated to any flames. It's not clear if this was an aborted static fire or some other kind of testing. On Monday afternoon, an interesting delivery was pulled into the build site. This appears to be the HLS airlock prototype that was previously at SpaceX's headquarters in Hawthorne, California. It's not yet clear what SpaceX's plan is for this hardware, but it could be that they'll integrate it with a ship nose cone and payload section for testing. A few hours later, similar to what we saw last week, one of the white stands that was built over at the Sanchez site earlier this year arrived at the ring yard to head into the Star Factory building. Given the construction of the latest stand, it appears that it might be used for integrating the booster thrust puck with the aft ring section. Peering through the rain that evening, venting could be seen over at Massey's for the second time in two days. This time, it was the Test Tank 16 undergoing a fresh round of testing. The vehicle was loaded with cryogenics and likely underwent some stress testing with the stand's hydraulic rams. Several MOVAC trucks were spotted at the launch site on Tuesday. These water trucks were working to remove the rainwater from the pad area to ensure crews were able to continue working safely following the heavy rains. That afternoon, the Sarens crew returned to Starbase and got to work on the reconfiguration of the crane. The back masts for the luffing jib were laid down to allow disassembly of the jib to commence. Wednesday morning, workers began installing the recently delivered glass entryway onto the high bay facing wall of the Star Factory building. The new entrance will have angled glass windows on either side of the two sets of double doors. Early that evening, a long assembly was rolled out of the Star Factory building and brought over to Mega Bay 2, likely for installation on Ship 33. With the rains passed for the time being, it was time for another round of Star Base's favorite activity as once again a concrete truck arrived and unfurled its boom to begin work. Over about a four hour period early on Friday, crews worked to place fresh concrete in the former ring yard. Also that morning, a glass delivery truck pulled into the build site. 
Crews quickly got to work offloading the two sets of double doors for the new Star Factory entrance. And just a few hours later, our production site rover camera panned over and we could see the crews had already installed one of the door frames and were actively installing the second. It appears that once the doors are mounted in the frames, all the major pieces of glass should be in place. That afternoon, a telehandler was spotted rolling through the ring yard, carrying a load spreader and making its way to the Star Factory. Following the recent concrete work, workers began removing some of the temporary barriers from the ring yard area, indicating that work there is likely wrapping up. Crews likely from the Texas Department of Transportation were seen installing new signs along the side of Highway 4 between the build site and the launch complex. These signs look to be road work related, possibly indicating that work may be starting soon for adding passing lanes along the road. That evening, another round of testing was observed on Test Tank 16 over at the Massey Outpost. Several rounds of testing on this article comes as no surprise. SpaceX definitely wants to put it through its paces and prove out the design. Switching over to Florida, early on Friday morning, NASA was at work offloading their Pegasus barge at the VAB Turning Basin. The engine section for the Artemis IV mission's SLS rocket was rolled onto the dock and taken away to NASA's nearby facilities. A few hours later, the Artemis III boat tail was also rolled off the barge. This section will eventually be attached to the engine section to protect the engines and the bottom of the core stage. On Saturday morning, Bob returned to port carrying both of the recovered fairing halves from the Starlink Group 8-11 launch. About an hour later, a short fall of Gravitas was towed out of Port Canaveral for the first time since the failed landing of Booster 1062. Unfortunately, the drone ship was not headed out for a launch, but rather to a dry dock in Freeport, likely for repairs following that failure. Back at the Vehicle Assembly Building's turning basin, crews finished offloading the Pegasus barge by bringing ashore the SLS stage adapter for the Artemis II mission. Artemis II is the next scheduled SLS mission and is currently slated for launch as soon as this time next year. Later on in the afternoon, Just Read the Instructions was towed back into port, carrying Booster 1077 following its Starlink mission. A few hours later, with all its cargo now removed, NASA's Pegasus barge was towed back out to sea. As the barge was leaving, Falcon 9 Booster 1077 was being lifted off of the deck of the drone ship and transferred to the dockside stand for processing. Then, following a remarkably quick turnaround of right around three hours, just read the instructions was towed away from the dock and back out to sea in support of the Polaris Dawn launch. And a few hours later, Go Cosmos followed the drone ship out of port. That ship then headed downrange, also in support of the Polaris Dawn mission. That evening, Bob also headed out of Port Canaveral. With the tracking data showing that Doug was back in the water in Charleston, it appears that it's now Bob's turn for maintenance as the ship headed for the recently vacated dry dock in South Carolina. Following a lengthy wait for favorable weather, the Polaris Dawn mission finally lifted off from Launch Complex 39A in the early hours of Tuesday morning. Jared Isaacman and Scott Poteet, as well as SpaceX's own Sarah Gillis and Anna Menon, headed out to space on their historic mission. This mission carried them further from the surface of the Earth than any humans have been since the Apollo era and included the first commercial spacewalk in history. Booster 1077 had completed its dockside processing and was laid onto the waiting transporter for its return to Roberts Road for refurbishment. Early on Wednesday, SpaceX once again took to the skies, this time launching the first five of AST Space Mobile's Bluebird satellites on their way to low Earth orbit. The massive communication satellites are the beginning of a new cell phone compatible internet constellation and each have an antenna that will unfurl to cover almost 700 square feet. Just over seven minutes after the launch, Falcon 9 Booster 1078 lit its engines for the third and final time of the mission as it slowed itself down before successfully touching down at landing zone one. Well after the light from the engines had died out, the sonic boom from the booster's descent reached Port Canaveral, shaking Gator Cam and startling a flock of birds into the air.
Several hours after that, just read the instructions returned to port for the second time in less than a week. This time, the drone ship was carrying Booster 1083 following its successful launch of the Polaris Dawn mission. And just a few hours later, the rocket was lifted off the deck of the ship and transferred to the dockside stand for leg stowing operations. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.